Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Monday, the 27th of June, and we're close to wrapping up the month of June. We're looking at this candle on the right. This is the right there. This is the monthly. A candle so far, it actually looks like a, a red Chapman Wave Roman candle. You don't really want to see that because if there's any any close on a daily basis below 30,650, that says, whoops, we could slide back to the 30,144. But if you're looking at the overall market, as I did all of, all of the weekend, and when I showed my subscribers to my opening call on Saturday and an hour-long video, I always have a weekend uh, overview uh, video, and it varies from 45 minutes to about an hour. Um, there's just so much to look at, and also the positions that we've taken. I mean, we've we had some really. I mean, one of the one of the gains we had was a 20% gain in just uh, less than a week. So what we're looking at here is, can that be sustained? Well, first of all, that rally on Friday when we had a, a, basically a, what I call a two-in-one day, that we, we doubled the noontime price, which was up about 400 points, and then we closed up 800 points. Didn't even have an intraday, uh, just a minor pullback, and just kept going higher and higher. We also had almost a Chapman Wave uh, Morbozo candle, where there's no wick. You, can, you did get that in. See, did I put that in here? Yeah, you almost got that in the, in the daily there. Uh, and we had a Chapman Wave low trend gauge, of 0.33 and a high trend gauge on the same day. And that invariably says, watch out for a lot of choppiness, but no matter what happens, this this indicator of mine, the Chapman Wave trend gauge indicator, which is really Richard Arms in um, short-term trading index. I just use it. I only use certain numbers on the upside and the downside. Uh, two numbers. Above or below it, I, I've, I've got a, a technique that I use. If it's above, it means within two days you're going to get a very strong uh, S&P mini rally that's going to help the market. <coughs> sneeze. What is this with the sneeze during my show? And if I sneeze any time during the day except uh, during the show. All right. Well, the issue here is that uh, that trend gauge indicated because it was low that there should be, no matter how high the futures are uh, on a Sunday night or a Monday prior to the opening, the very next day, this is not a two-day rule, but a, a one-day rule, says the very next day, there should, thank you very much, there should be a, a negative uh, price action in the Dow. Regardless, I would normally say with that move that we saw on Friday that we would give back at least 20%, even 30% of the last hour's trading that we saw on Friday. That's the normal thing that I would say to subscribers when I do my, let me just show you what I do for my subscribers every day. For instance, here's the Dow chart right here. Uh, wait a minute, why is it not showing fully? Oh, that's interesting. All right, well, it's not showing fully, but it should. Uh, here's the chart. And then and then underneath it, this is the daily chart on the left, daily chart in the middle with added indicators. And on the right, is the 120-minute chart. You can see how close we're trying to get to the 200-period moving average of 31,712. It's a leg E. You'd expect some kind of a pullback. The uh, technicals are just a, a very strong, but a little bit overbought nearer term. Um, and then I give a whole um, a paragraph of just the full analysis of what I'm looking at and what I expect by the end of the day. This is for subscribers to my opening call every single day. Well, within that context, you will see that the this is now live. So we've gone, what did I say, 31,700. So what was the high today so far? The high today is, uh, here we go, the high today is 31,576. Uh, so we're still underneath the 31,558. Uh, oh, we, we touched it. 558 level of the, that resistance. This one also has Chapman Wave automated uh, support and resistance lines, 31044 was one, and we snapped through it. 30,135 was terrific support because we broke 
We use that to break above. Here in the light green is 32,524 as the outside uh, short term target on the upside resistance uh, automated. So, all right, we've got a whole bunch of things that we look at. But now let me go through everything. We, we've got the Dow now down 83. So far, the day is young, but so far we've had really superb action having the futures gone, going even higher because, look, here's the futures, and the futures went, look at that, uh, went all the way to 31,695. And right now what we're looking at is they are at 31,407, down 80. So we've made a new extension. That means we could pull back. We've got strong support in the futures of 31,100. In the Dow itself, it's, we've got typed in there, uh, 31,171 would be the support level. Um, is that a one? No, they can't be, surely. Yes, it is. Wow, way down there. But I would, I'd be looking at the 120-minute chart for the near-term support levels still in the 31,125s. Well, all I can say is that so far this is superb action. And one of the things I looked at, look, look at Boeing. I mean, Boeing should be on its ear. I mean, you've got this international conflagration. You've got everything going wrong. You've got oil prices up in the sky. Look at this outstanding action from 113 to the 140s. That's a 30-point rally. I mean, let's face it. You can't sneeze at that. Can't sneeze at that. You can't dismiss that. Uh, the stochastics at 82%. The MACD is good. So let's just go through these things very slowly. Now, it's the beginning of the week. We don't have to rush. Looking at the S&P, this is the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Resistance Line. Uh, it says the next strong resistance will be in the 3970 area. That's that's really a lot higher. So I, I just I usually treat that as just it's just a sign, a signal. But if you want to do something here, you can always say, look, the S&P 120 minute chart based on the Chapman wave notation. There's your low bar. The high bar cannot also be a low bar count. So you have to wait for a turnaround to get yourself. A trough. Until you get a trough, you can't start, start your wave count. So now you can start your wave count. And what do we get? We get peak A right there, peak B right there, peak C, peak D. And this is either an E or a brand new A. I usually put the alternate count to say, hey, it's more likely an E than an A because that would say you're now about to start the 120 minute chart after a brief respite. Brand new peak A, then a B, and a C, and a D, going towards 4,012, 200 period moving average. I, I'd rather just do one step at a time. MACD's good stochastics, fabulous at 97%. The unbalanced volume, the blue line in the S&P is um, somewhat overboard. And if you just look at the pattern that I con constantly talk about, how we revert, uh, all the market does on a continuous basis, continual basis, is make sine waves, arches to cups to arches to cups to get your straight lines. But these are the patterns I look at. Now we're in the process of possibly forming an arch pattern if this, when, this cup, when or if this cup fails. Uh, let's look at the QQQ. So the s and on 13. Uh, I, I would say minus 22 to minus 26 probably will be the limit today before there's a, a stronger bounce. We'll see what happens there. The QQQ. Uh, trading down about 80 at 29.79 at a spectacular. You can expect it. Well, you have to expect it. Yeah, I'll be back in about a thousand chapters. I get to finish of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, well, so the uh, Qs are now down 2.43 at uh, 292.21. Um, that's important because what we're really saying here is that when the context of, you know, of the 120-minute uh, chart, that 200-period moving average, which is also a target of 300.72. This is the, look how quickly we've gone from a trough to a peak A, B, C, D, and even an, I'm calling this an E right now. Um, look how long the other one was when we went from the 20, around about the 23rd or so, uh, the 20th of uh, June, no, of May. We went peak A, B, C, D, and you went from uh, 280 all the way to that peak G above the 200 period moving average before that line became an incredible, look at this incredible resistance level. So 300 to 3, uh, 1456, that, yeah, that's a pretty big move. It's a 5% move. And what we're looking at here is, yeah, we've gone from 269, uh, 269 to a high today of 296. Actually, that's also pretty darn good. It's not the same percentage, but it's not as good. I, I like long legs to the upside. That's usually very bullish. So what's really important here is that the stochastic at 92% in the 120-minute chart, that I love that. That's fantastic, and that's strength. So it says that any pullback here should be transitory. It should be momentary. It shouldn't be very long, and we should be trying for... 298.80 that's that's a long that's a big ask but it should do that by midweek so that we, we can get to the 300 level uh, quite soon because you don't really want to see it back down under 289 uh, okay so that's the cues uh, got, got quite a lot of questions coming in let me just finish this for a moment here IWM Russell 2000 leg B doing very nicely up uh, two cents at 175.10 it's funny how it's rotated some days it's a leader, some days it's a complete failure. I'm watching it closely, but mo most importantly, it is rallying. It's being lifted up by the other. other. It's not a leader at all. It's just being lifted up. Now, let's just quickly go through to all this gold. Is, and now it's down. I just, you know, I don't see gold doing very much at all. It's just stuck in a race, holding very well, but that's not good enough. 1828, if it breaks under 1818, uh, that's not, not going to be a good sign at all. But if it's able to climb into the 18. Uh, 57s sometime this week, then that 1865, uh, 200 period moving average that we've spoken about for about a month and a half now, that's going to be the target. We're looking at silver. 
Silver had been doing a little better than gold. Even now, it's doing a little bit better than gold. Even the chart is just a, a fraction better, but not that much. It's up uh, 0.18 at 2130. Now, let's go to the dollar, DXY, um, thousands dollar. We're still long the dollar from 2018, April, at 90.07 via the UUP. It's at 103.94 right now, down 20 cents. It's just stuck in the range, but in the higher range, whereas gold is in the lower range, this is stuck in the higher range, holding quite well. However, EUR, USD, this is going to be the clue. It's gone to a peak A. Did it? Yep, it squeaked to a peak B. And it's also stuck in a range, but it's actually holding quite well at this particular point. It's going to take the dollar as, as the key to tell you whether or not um, euro is going to go much higher in this shorter term time frame. Uh, if we can trade, it's at 1.057 right now. Uh, up 0 0.002. If it's able to get the 1.06, give it the exact figure right now. If it's able to get above the candles high of the 10th of June, this is a continuous contract of 1.06423. If it's able to even not trade, but uh, not close, but just trade above that for one penny, that is going to be really important. That'll probably say, okay, now the dollar starts pulling back a little bit more slow within the rectangle. Looking at the USD JPY. This is the yen currency pair. Made a peak D, stalling at the top. Peak E, if there's no new high this week, it's 136.17, down just four ticks. And what we're really looking at here is that if it's able to get to the 137.60 level or higher, that is going to be a big deal because it says, you know what, all the technicals are reverting back to very positive. Right now they're positive, but the Magni has turned down. So the Castix now only at 80%, but that 9 is still way above the 14. Let's look at gold. Oh, we did that. Let's look at the TLT. Oh, I wanted to show you this. So the TLT in the big picture um, has just been making huge sideways moves in a rectangle fashion. And then and another one in, below that starting a new parameter. I don't know if this is going to be the start of a new uh, sequence to the downside, but if you're looking at the TNX.X, this is the 10-year Treasury bond, uh, Treasury note yield. Uh, that is at 3166, 3.166. I'm watching this. I think it's kind of stuck. It could go just above 3510, 3.510. But if it starts to trade underneath 28.67, which is the 14-period exponential moving average, that'll be the first time it's traded under it before, I would say close. I'm sorry, I should say close under it. That's the first time it would have closed underneath that important 14-period moving average since the seventh week of the 17th of December when it went to 13.72. 1.372. So this is going to be quite an important uh, moment uh, all round. I think I did. If you, oh, crude oil. I just didn't do crude oil. Let me just show you something. So a couple of questions came in. Uh, could I look at uh, Chevron, Exxon, and what was the other one? Uh, Sombrage. So 107.95 of 33 cents. It's in the lower range. It's gone to a sell mode. That's why there's a down arrow and it's crossed under the ninth period moving average. But this is all the daily. The weekly is still holding very well in the buy mode. And the monthly as well. But this crude oil is going to be critical because it's in this rectangle formation. If at any point it closes under 100, I think that's going to help the market a lot and then help Jets, which is the um, Jets is the US Global Jets ETF. That's the airlines basically down 34 cents at 1709, making a leg B to the upside under the 14 period moving average. It can't close above that. The nine is still, it's still negative. The nine is under the 14. This is going to be a, a, a big deal. And I don't know why I would even be thinking that there was a much broader move to the upside and that was very really important. But that's just the way that the technicals are. Not, I mean, maybe we're not climbing a wall of worry, we're climbing a barbed wire fence. But this is really important. So just going back to the crude oil again, I forgot to talk about one thing. There's a question came in about the SCO, someone who would be uh, being long the SCO. This is the uh, ProShares Ultra Short, um, Ultra Short, what's the full name here? Uh, Bloomberg Crude. Uh, so this is uh, going short the, the uh, oil. It's uh, made a peak B at the 50 period moving average. The MACD is good. Stochastic's flat at 86%. It's holding well. And that's the reason why I was saying, what's the downside for crude oil? Because if it does pull back, that's going to be a help to the general market. Um, uh, if, 
if the SCO actually closes above 24.24 any time this week, that's not just a leg C. That's going to be a big deal because that says you're now going to target the left side half of the 19th of May, which is 24. Wow, 85. So that would, that would be quite a dip in crude oil. I'm just saying those are the parameters to look for. A question came in as well about, let me just do this now, FXI. FXI is the China large cap ETF. Uh, trading at 3413 uh, off its high today of uh, 3451. I've got this as F smash C. See this orange 200 period moving average in the daily chart? If the FXI this week even touches 3470, no, 3480, that 3525 becomes a magnet. Once it starts to touch that 200 period moving average, you've got to change of character completely. So that's what I'd look for. And Queb, also Chinese, this is internet, uh, Chinese internet ETF. Make an alternate account C, maybe an e slash C in the daily, leg D in the weekly. I'll talk about it when we get back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Uh, so, uh, so that was the FXI, that was the China uh, large cap. But also a question came in about that, that Queb, and that Queb is the um, uh, internet, uh, ETF, Chinese internet. The big thing about what's going on now is I think now you, some, a question came in. Uh, Basil, you were so negative going into uh, two weeks ago, and then last week you came very, very positive, And you said you told subscribers to finally put money to work. Um, what's going on? <laughs> well, what's going on, Bob, is um, the oversold condition that I was looking at, both AAII, is that American uh, Amateur, what is it, Investors, uh, and I should know the name because I've given talks to them before, 
just don't seem to get that right. And investors, anyway, it's the American AI. I think it's uh, that, that. Those are the um, that's the initials. Um, it's like seventy percent bearish. I mean, just huge numbers. <clears throat> that doesn't mean to say that oh, you can get so bullish now that it's going to go to the moon. It just says that right at this particular moment, the downside is more uh, individual stocks, and it's also more. Short, very near term, because you can see even today, how how come after being up 800 points on Friday, we're only down, well, the days, yeah, we're only down 48, 50 points at this point in the Dow, only 10 in the S&P. There is a lot of buying going on. And that's what I'm looking at. So this is where the good question came in. So that so the answer is, I, I felt strongly enough that subscribers who had, Listen to me since the beginning of the year and have been building up, even the end of the year, it started to build up cash positions. This was prudent. This was money management at its best where you could start to put money to work. We've got our stops in. We've got almost the low in the Dow. We've got the lows in many of the issues that are really working very well. We've got one that was just decimated. It just it was in two actually that have been just decimated all year, just lower lows and lower low highs, lower lows and lower highs, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. So finally we got, I mean, good percentage gains off, the, off this. Just gives us a cushion. That's all I wanted is for my subscribers to get a cushion like we've done many times. We've managed to pick some kind of decent low. Once you get that, because if it bounces, when it pulls back from that level, as long as it doesn't get back to your low or if you're short from that high, it doesn't get back there. You can sit through, mish, you know, wishy-washy days. But all I can say is that so far this is not a wishy-washy day. <laughs> now down just 34, down six in the Dow. I mean, there should normally be a much bigger pullback. This could turn out to be a takeoff period. A takeoff period means that the market gives you no entry, re-entry. You get in, you get out, you can't get back in. Or if you're out, you just don't know when to get every time you want to get back in. <clears throat> It just keeps moving sharply higher. And I'm not saying this is the what we're looking at right now. Whoops. Because <clears throat> we actually need to see what happens all week. It needs to be like that all week. Uh, every every dip gets bought and it goes to high highs. We haven't seen that. But this is the pattern that I'm looking at, that the V-shaped pattern in the – let me just do this one more time – ING, look at this V-shaped pattern in the Dow. But this is leg B. We've seen, look at this, this is the leg A, and then it stalled at 33,272, the previous one that went from the May 20th uh, low of 30.65. So this is just the start. Look at nicely how the MACD cross positive stochastics finally at 34%. That's what I was looking at. Unbalanced volumes turning up. What if the unbalanced volume goes to? Uh, overbought and the stochastic does what it usually, do, uh, usually does when it's in a rally mode, goes over 80%. You've got from 34 to 80, so there's another at least a couple of days, you'll see. So that's all I'm looking at. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so now a question came in. Uh, Hi, Basil. Would you buy puts on coin, C-O-I-N? If so, to what date and price? So this is the difficulty. Um I'm starting to get signals. You remember, we were long the back two years ago. We were long the Bitcoin. We had a spectacular rally to the upside. We got out of almost all of it. We kept just a tiny bit. Just watched it go down. We just uh, finally, I said, we're out of it. And for a couple, maybe two months now, we've just been looking at this thing. I'm, I'm just, you see, if you buy options, what happens? Look, it's a Coinbase global and cryptocurrency platform for buying. It's just the most horrible chart. A year, monthly, weekly chart is just not horrible. It's just terrible. If you look at the, the daily chart, it's made this arch formation, a dreaded H pattern, and it says, you know what? I'm not making, not yet. I'm not making a new low. I'm holding steady. I am, I am trying to form a base. Or it's already gone to leg A, leg a, peak A, peak B, and this is maybe peak C in the shortest time frame and the smallest movement. That's very negative. I'm with you. I'd be looking at this as a short. But what would you do if there were two overnight moves to the upside? This thing can go very quickly from 56 to 66. Your option, even if it was longer, you'd be watching it kind of shrivel. 
I'm, I don't know if I want that risk. In other words, your reward would be spectacular if today it's, it stays down $6 at 56, uh, 60 and then tomorrow it gaps down another 6 or $7. What if instead it just turns around and comes back up? Because that would say probably what you really want is to do uh, to, to you know, short the call and buy the put and have a big spread on the outside because this could stay in a range for quite a while. I just see it too complicated. There are much better positions to take to rely than that because I agree with you. I think coin looks terrible. I think it is going to, I believe it's going to retest at some point. It will test and probably break the low that was made back in the 12th of May at 40.83. The only way I would do it is I would buy, we're in June. So July will be the next uh, options expiration on the monthly basis. And you can do the weeklies, but the monthly goes to 15th of July. Um, I probably would say 15th of July, here we are at 27. I'd probably say I'd want to move out to August, but I, that, that, none of this makes sense. I think I'm the wrong person. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say um, maybe uh, ask uh, Dave White, um, you know, uh, or, or Tom O'Brien. I, I just, I, I don't see any, I don't have a methodology here to, that says to me that buying the put at this particular point will be successful even if you're looking out. What I would say on a weekly basis, if you can get a really good price on a 57, no, no, it would be down, 55, on a 55 put, if you can get a decent price somewhere below uh, 75 cents, that's where I would look at it, and I'd actually do it on a weekly basis. I'd probably do it to this Friday. That's the only way I'd do it, and I'd say I'm prepared to lose X amount of money, but if it works, it's going to be real quick, and I'm in and I'm out. That's the best way I can do it right now. Looking at this doesn't look very good at all, but I'm, I'm just having a tough time giving you the right strike price, etc. But I would say on a very short-term basis, knowing what you could lose, you could make two or even three times your money because if you look at Bitcoin, uh, look at this. It tried to rally today. Now it's down 646. It's just out of favor. When something's out of favor, you're absolutely correct in your premise, I believe. I'm just giving you the different. I just, I'm having a tough time giving you much more specificity than I gave you a moment ago. Um, and, and, and in fact, Bitcoin is slowly, technically improving just a little bit. That's why I'm saying a quick pop to the upside. I don't know what to do, but you can only do it if you know your risk. Uh, Dow is down uh, 36. Yes, if he's not 7,000 chapter. Tiger questions are going to Other questions can be in. I did do my CDX. CDX is uh, up. And I'll talk about it soon. It hit 200 feet moving average. How important is that? Ah, talk about it when I get there. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, we're back and we're looking at a Chevron. Well, what did it do? It has, not, it has not touched the 200 period moving average since it hugged that line for about two, three months more away from July to September. July, yep, three months back in 2000. And what, what the heck was that? That must have been 2021. 20, Look at that. Uh, just a sine wave up and down and up and down around this uh, seesaw, zigzag, yo yo. And then it broke out, and that was it. It was done when it broke out on the uh, 25th, I think, of September. Let me give you the exact date. Yep, there it is. On the 24th of September of 2021, it said goodbye to the 200 period moving average, never to see it again until the, uh, what, uh, what are we doing here? Until the 23rd of June, 2022. And I would say that's, what, nine months or something? Uh, and then it touched it, and now it's trying to bounce off it. But the way it's come down is saying to me that 143.00, that's a round number there, 200 period moving average at this particular point, and it's trading at 148.27. It's like a magnet right now. And until uh, Chevron is able to trade on a weekly basis, it doesn't have to, should I say on a weekly? Yeah, intra-week. If it can get to 158 above the 157 14 period moving average, that'll be fantastic average uh, action. But 152 is really the issue. Can it break above and hold above? But that is a magnet to this particular point until it pushes away. So that's Chevron. If you're looking at this as a daily chart, if you're looking at Exxon. Hmm, Wilmington. Yeah, I forgot about Wilmington. Uh, that just flashed on my screen. XOM. It's way above the 200 period moving average. It was back there at 57.76 back in Jan uh, December of this past year, around about the 20th or so at 57.76. And that was it. Goodbye. It went all the way to 105. Now it's trading. It made a trough C in the day. So this is a better charge. Remember, Chevron was wait. I don't know how this is happening. What is this? With the uh, man, I tell you. I don't want the left axis. I don't even know why it got there. Okay, that's gone. There it is. So what we're looking at here is that Chevron is is a little weaker in the shorter term. It was the stronger. But look at Exxon's monthly chart. Remember, we were looking at this. Look at that. 104.76 on the July 2012. And 10 years later, it goes to what? 104.76 was the previous high. And this is 105. I mean, how many times have I said to you 105.57, based on the Chevron wave techniques, that when you have the spectacular move that goes sharply lower and then comes back and comes within a dollar or, or sometimes pennies of the previous high and the technicals suggest that it could be a little bit of a pullback, that's what we've got here. So the 105 area, 104, 105, is still a magnet to the upside until or if 
uh, Exxon starts to trade under 79, closes under 79, and I'll just say, you know what, we're in for a longer timeout. So now what we're looking at is the Dow is down to, why did, why did we want to go long? Uh, Friday a week ago, we started our long positions in the diamonds uh, to add to our core position from 2020, 2020 uh, March the 23rd. Um, what we're looking at is the strength of the technicals coming off the low um, is, is such that within the context of broadening out, and that really was the big issue for me, are we seeing a broadening out Thursday and Friday? Is it just a singular move to the upside? I'm very disappointed as SMHs, whoops, I wrote it in the wrong place, SMHs are still very weak, SMH right here. Um, it's in leg B, uh, but this is not, it's not leadership. It's up 55 cents, up 0.26% today. Yep, yeah, leading today. But so far, it's not a leadership. It is just being actually dragged up by the general market. So until I see the semiconductor area just actually leading on a three-day basis, not on a one-day basis, on a three-day basis, I have to consider that the big picture says, hey, don't get too carried away. Get your... your, your we were fortunate to get the lows or close to the lows in many areas, but that's not a guarantee that uh, yeah, things are really working until the end of this coming week. And I know you've got the, labor, you've got the, um, the July 4th weekend, and the rule of thumb is that many times you rally into the July 4th, and you've got to be careful. I don't think there's a rule of thumb right now. This Either of my thumbs, you can't really tell what's going on. All I can say is that I love what's going on at the, at the, at the moment. I'm not going to fight it. A uh, question came in. Um, where was it? Oh, on the other side. Oh, yes. Uh, how, how does this fit in with your interest rate and your perspective on commodities? Well, look at the DBA. The DBA, the DBA Agricultural Fund, it's under the 200 period moving average. I've been warning for a while, even though we are long the DBA from 13s, and it hit 23, and now it's at 20.65. I think you go, I, I'm considering that I might even exit this. I, I don't think I will, but because we're in, in such a good position, maybe I'll lighten up a little more. We've already lightened up three times, uh, just to take a tad off. I think that the commodities are under pressure. Look, look at wheat under the 200 period moving average. Look at soybeans, soybean continuous contract. Uh, good move today, but it's made a peak D top. And it's a it pullback in the weekly chart under the 14 period moving average. Look at Khan. Khan um, is, is fading after that peak D, but it, it's not fading. It's just the daily chart. The weekly chart is still holding pretty well in the H pattern. So I'm just saying, I think that we're in for a surprise to the upside because we're seeing alleviation of all the aspects of the inflationary part of it, even if it's temporary. And I, I said to subscribers, we want to be buying and we want the dips to be buying. So we have uh, positions, I don't know, I haven't been following it today, that we did want to buy on some dips. A uh, question in the den, a Andy, A-N-D-E, A-N-D-E, Andy, uh, Andy is Anderson Inc. What does Anderson Inc. do? Um, 33.19 right now. Whoa, this is a struggle. So this one says, it's gonna, the, the technicals are actually holding quite well, but the price uh, in the weekly chart and the monthly chart are not that good. Peak A. Peak A, B, C, made a peak D in the monthly chart, pulls back from the 8 area down to the 33. Well, more than cut in half. I'm not sure what that means. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, AG related. Yes, exactly. So that, that covers my point. Of course, oh, I, I, I remember Andy, which is Anderson Inc. in the commodity area. I'd forgotten completely about it. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, yes. So now let me just do this. I haven't done this all day. I meant to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I have people who actually like to see my intraday uh, notation in the Chapman Wave methodology. This is the E mini, uh, peak B, peak C, pulls back another A and a B and a C, and makes a lower low and goes to A, A, B, C, D, E. Look how important the 200 period exponential moving average is. It failed at, the, at a peak F in the one minute chart at about 9.30 this morning, plummets down, and now it's clawed its way back in the a rectangle 
to a lopsided gravy cup arch formation right here. There it is. Wow, nice. I'll be back in a moment. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, yes, there's a break. Final segment coming up. That's <laughs> yeah, but don't really push yourself. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So, yes, we've got the peak E in the uh, uh, one minute chart. Beautiful. I mean, look at this. The Dow is up 61. That's what I meant. This is a possible takeoff phase. If, uh, and uh, Nicholas, thank you very much for that information. I, I read it in total disbelief, although I, I really wanted to believe it because my analysis is that there's a chance, just a chance that it could happen. So he sent JP Morgan strategist Marco Kolonovic uh, indicated in a note to clients Friday that U.S. equities may climb as much as 7% next week as investors rebalance portfolios amid the end of the month, second quarter, and first half of the year. Next week's rebalance is important since equity markets were down significantly over the past month, quarter six months. And on top of that, the market is in an oversold condition. Cash balances are at record levels, and recent market shorting activity reached levels not seen since 2008. I, I, I'm in agreement with them. I, I would not fight that, and that's the reason why we, we're along. I, as I say, I don't know if we actually did get the extra added uh, one. We took some money off. We had really good gains, 13% on one, and we wanted to get add back. We'll just see what happens. So within that context, what I wanted to do is to say um, I, uh, I'm, I'm just double-checking. I don't think Larry's able to do the show today. 
<clears throat> I have family here, but everybody said it's okay, just uh, do another hour because there's, I, I wanted to get to uh, a little more detail in some of the currencies, etc. I want to do it for my own sake. I may as well take that time now. So let me just double check um, if that's the case, if Larry, Larry is not here. Um, I haven't heard back. So if, that, if that's the case, I'll, I'll be sitting in for the next hour. So more importantly than anything else, what we are looking at is after an 800-something point move on Friday, not to be down 250 points to 300 points right now, but instead to be up in the Dow, 62 points. Up as I just that's the spine crash. So with that said, I will, I will be back in the next hour. Pull in Larry's hour, not to pull in for trade, but to see nobody can do that. That now and we have a lot of what Larry likes to look at. Oh, but you can have one of Larry's favorites.